Hey guys, James with Torches and Tactical, and today we're looking at the Wubin X1. Now Wubin calls this an ECL, or Everyday Carry Light, and that's because of its small form factor, but don't let the size fool you. This does have three XHP70.2 LEDs from Cree, and those are going to pump out 12,000 lumens for a total distance of 303 meters. Now that whole thing is powered by two 21700 cells inside the body, and to keep those charged up, it does have USB-C charging, but as far as the modes go, you do have five different brightness settings as well as a strobe and an SOS. So one fantastic feature about this is it does have an active cooling fan, but still maintains an IP55 water resistance rating. So before we dive into the light, let's go ahead and take a look at the packaging and find out everything that comes with it. So the box is pretty well done. It is a nice stiff cardboard and you can see exactly what you're getting. This will represent the color black or white depending on what you ordered. And on the back, it'll let you know that it has a turbo, high, medium, low, and eco mode, as well as their respective brightness levels. So you can see that turbo goes all the way out to 12,000 lumens, while eco will only run at 20 lumens, but it'll do it for 22, I'm sorry, 220 hours. And if we open up this box, you will see that the light you received does come in a very well done pouch with almost like a soft fleece inside, and that's going to keep everything protected very, very well. Just listen to the sound of this clasp. And that's not going to go anywhere. In addition to that, you do have a user manual. And I have to tell you, this is probably one of the most extensive user manuals I've seen. Uh, you open it up and it's almost like a car window cover. Also inside here, you do have an accessories container. And that includes a USB-C to C port, as well as a camo lanyard. Now let's pick this up real quick and keep moving on. Now if we take a look at the X1 up close, you will see that this doesn't have any traditional knurling anywhere on it, but it does have a very angular design, uh, almost industrial, with large machining groups built in pretty much everywhere. And that's going to make sure that you have a nice grip. And that is all accompanied by the fact that it is a 6061 coated with a type three hard anodized coating. And that's just going to aid in that grip even more. And I have to say, I love what they did with the white, but it does also come in a black color, but the finish on the actual hard anodizing is very, very well done. It's very even. And I, I don't feel like I'm going to lose this or lose grip on it at all. Now, like I said, Wubin does call it an ECL, and that is because of a very, very slim design. Now, if I just set it in the palm of my hand, you can kind of get a feel for how large it is. But if you want those dimensions, it is 5.06 inches long by 2.2 inches wide by 1.1 inches deep. So it's not very big at all, especially for the output that you get from this. So if we want to compare it to something else that puts out around the same amount, here we have the Workos TS32. Now it may look pretty close like this, but if we bring it to its side, you can see that it is considerably smaller. You, you can almost fit two of the Wubin X1s inside one of the Workos TS32. So I think that's pretty fantastic. Now, since it does have more of the angular design and very flat edges, it will tail stand for days and give you directional light, but it doesn't offer any sort of magnetic adhesion from the base plate. Now this doesn't have any sort of pocket clip or any other way to attach it, but that included lanyard will fit inside this hole here and holds it very secure. Now, one thing you will, or may notice are two small holes down here at the bottom. And that does allow for the attachment of a bike mount that is available from Wubin. Although it's still kind of a heavy device for a bike light. I did test it out and it works very well, 
but it does come in at 379 grams or 13.4 ounces. So this light comes in almost at a pound. Now the tolerances of the machining are very, very close. You can see that this is actually two different sections of the body joined in the middle, as well as the switch plate. Now the switch is an E-switch and gives you very nice feedback. Although sometimes it does feel and sound like there might be a little bit of air trapped in there, creating a, a bit of a suction noise, but it doesn't affect anything negatively at all. However, if your X1 does have any issues, you'll be pleased to note that Wubin does offer you a one year warranty on your X1. So if anything does happen, they are more than willing to help make it right. Now, if we focus on the business end, like I said before, you do have those three Cree XHP 70.2 LEDs. That'll give you 12,000 lumens of output. And it does it in the temperature range of between 54 and 5600. And that's according to my testing. Uh, unfortunately, it is not very accurate as far as color rendering goes and came in just under 70 CRI in every mode that I tested. Now, given the unique shape, it does give you a Siamese triple orange peel reflector, and that's gonna help even out that light a little bit and help with some tint shift. That is pretty common with the XHP 70.2. But even with a little bit of tint shift, I've been very happy with this. Now, in order to turn it on, it will be shipped to you in a locked out state. So in order to turn it on, you do have to press the button four times within half a second. Got one, two, three, four, and that went ahead and unlocked it. And now from an off state, you can hit it once and it will turn on, or you can press and hold the button and that will go to your moonlight mode. If you double tap the switch, it will go into turbo. Three taps will give you a strobe mode. And one nice thing about this is when it's on, if you do a tap and hold, you can actually change the setting or the max or minimum brightness for each of the modes. So right now we're on that eco mode and this will shift between 40 and 200 lumens. Just to give you a little bit of usability and personality in your light so you can change each mode to custom tailor to exactly what you'd use it for. Now, eventually, if we keep playing around with the X1, it will die and this battery indicator will start flashing red. But you'll be pleased to note that with the USB-C charging, it does bump up to nine volts and two amps, giving you a total of 18 watts of charging power. And these two 21700 cells do charge in under two hours. And during that two hours, you will see this battery indicator show up as red while it's charging and switch to blue after it finally completes charging. And this battery indicator, when you turn on the light, will also give you a state of battery health. So let's get outside and look at a couple night shots and we'll compare this to the TS32 from Workos. Then we'll come back in, touch on a couple key points and get you guys on your way. All right, guys, we have the Wubin X1 burning at 12,000 lumens. And we also have the Workos TS32 burning at 15,000 lumens. All right, guys, we went outside and compared the Wubin X1 with the Workos TS32. Now, I don't know if you picked it up while we were outside at night, but shining at 12,000 lumens, you do get a little bit of fan noise. Now, let me put it up to the microphone so you can hear this. Now it is audible while you're using the Falcon X1, but I don't think it's overpowering or overbearing or anything. And frankly, I love active cooling. We have an X75 from Ace Beam as well, and the active cooling on that is fantastic. Now with the TS32, you do see that pure wall of light with a different tint than you get from the XHP 70.2 LEDs. 
but I mean, they almost don't compare with each other. This is because the X1 seems to be built for ultra portability, getting as much sustained output from those three XHP70.2 LEDs, while the TS32 seems to focus more on the tint. Now, it is a little bit heavy of a light, and for that reason, I don't recommend using it as a bike light, although that attachment still is available. And with those XHP70.2 LEDs, you do get a bit of that tint shift. However, with the very high output for its size, including the sustained output, as well as the fast charging, I mean, you, there's not much else out there that you're gonna get nine volts and two amps out of. But all in all, I'm very pleased with the Wubin X1 and I hope that you guys are too. So down in the comments below, tell me what you guys think of the X1 or if there's any comparisons you'd like to see. So thank you guys so much for being here with me today and we will see you in the next one.